Hi, this video is a part of machine learning from scratch playlist. In this playlist, I explain different machine learning algorithms implemented from scratch using Python. You can download the relevant Python files from the link given in the description of each video. Note that I do not code along, rather I make use of pen for explaining the tricky parts of code so that you people can read the notebooks and Python files and understand them yourself. And of course, re-implement them yourself. I'm expecting my audience to be well versed with machine learning general understanding and they just need little hints for implementation of algorithms from scratch. In this video, I'll explain Gaussian mixture model, which make use of expectation maximization algorithm for optimization. Let's understand this idea in detail. Mixture of Gaussian is basically a clustering and density estimation algorithm where we are assuming that our data is coming from different Gaussian distributions. So this is our assumption. And we want to uh, separate these Gaussian distributions so that uh, we get separately these uh, Gaussian models. So in a way, we want to find out different Gaussian distributions and each Gaussian distribution is having uh, two parameters. One is a mean, another one is standard deviation if it is in one dimension and covariance matrix if uh, it is in multi-dimensional. So we, are, we will be considering this covariance matrix. So basically we have to learn these two parameters for each of the Gaussian distribution. Moreover, we'll also make use of density and prior likelihood of each Gaussian cluster. What do I mean by that? So consider that we have a Gaussian distribution over data in this input space. This is the first Gaussian distribution and this one is the second Gaussian distribution. So there are only five data points in this Gaussian distribution and there are way more than five data points. So of course the density for this cluster number two or for this second Gaussian is greater than the first one. So we, we could say that the prior likelihood for any data point to be a part of this second Gaussian, uh, second Gaussian distribution or second cluster is much more than the uh, than it than to be uh, of the first one. So this is what we call the weight of each cluster or weight of each Gaussian. So I'm using these terms clusters and Gaussians interchangeably. Why? Because we are considering here each cluster to be of shape Gaussian. That's why we call it mixture of Gaussians. So we want to do clustering, but our assumption is that each cluster is basically of a Gaussian shape. So for that reason, uh, in K means we just learn the mean of data and we adjust the center of a cluster. Here we don't only learn the mean of data, but we also learn the covariance matrix because Gaussian has both of these uh, both of these parameters. Along with these two parameters, we have a third parameter to learn, which is the density or the weight of each Gaussian or cluster. So we have a total, this is one, one added parameter. So we have a total of three parameters. We have to learn the three parameters for each of the Gaussian. And now, given these parameters, if we are having these parameters, mean covariance and prior likelihood, and we are given any data point, and we have to, and we are asked to find out uh, the probability of this new data point coming from either one of uh, Gaussian distributions. Suppose we are trying to fit three Gaussian distributions. So we want to find the probability of this new data point for each of the Gaussian. So what we will do is, we will find out given this new data point, we will give this new data point to each of the Gaussian separately. This will be a Gaussian function. This will be a, this is a Gaussian distribution having parameters, uh, mean and covariance as I have already explained. So this is one first Gaussian, then this is second Gaussian, and then this is third Gaussian, suppose. So this new data point will be given to this first Gaussian and it will give out a value between zero to one. And then this new data point will be given to this second Gaussian and it will give the probability of occurrence in this Gaussian to be 0 to 1 in the same way for the third Gaussian between 0 to 1. So we have the probability of occurrence of this new data point in one of the Gaussian distribution. Now what we will do is we will multiply this value of 0 to 1, this Gaussian output with the prior likelihood of this Gaussian. So what will happen is once we multiply it with the prior likelihood, we will get the actual uh, uh, final um, probability of this data point of this data point occurring in this first Gaussian in the same way when we multiply with the prior of the second Gaussian then we get the final output probability of this data point in this second Gaussian so this is how it works we given given these three parameters we just uh, find out the probability and then we multiply it with its prior so we uh, get the final output probability once we have these final output probabilities we will normalize it so that they sum to one 
So once they sum to one, so in a way, then we can call them a membership. So this data point will have a suppose a final uh, after after normalizing. So once we normalize all of these memberships, all of these final probabilities, so we will be having the probabilities which will sum to one. Suppose for the first Gaussian, it is having a value of 0.8 after normalization. And for the second one, it is 0.15. And for the third one, it is 0.05. So what does it mean? It means that this new data point is basically coming from this first Gaussian. But somehow it has, but somehow it has some relationship or some probability of occurrence in second Gaussian also. And very little probability of occurring in the third Gaussian. So it is very much related and it is very much a part of this first Gaussian. So given the parameters, we estimate these, this, this is what we will call responsibilities. This is a term that we will be using while coding. We can also call it uh, membership. We can also call it, we can also give it any other name, but we'll call it responsibilities. So these are responsibilities and these responsibilities will sum to one. Okay. Okay. So what will happen is this whole thing is explained here. So this is what we call, what I explained, the expectations set or the E set. So in the first, first we initialize the parameters, these three parameters, weight, mean, and covariances, or the prior likelihood, uh, then uh, mean and covariance. Given these parameters, we find the probability of each of data point occurring in these different Gaussian clusters. Given these probabilities, we find out the responsibilities which sum to one. And how do we do it? We multiply those probabilities with the prior density and we divide it by sum to normalize. Okay, now the second step is maximization step and both of these steps will go on again and again, iteratively. What is the maximization step? We want to go opposite. Here we have these responsibilities or probabilities or memberships. Now we want to compute the density of these data points, the mean and the covariances. How will we do it? In k-means, when we assign the cluster number to a data point, then we find out the mean of those data points occurring in that ith cluster and whatever the mean value is we assign uh, the cluster uh, the, the, the mean of those data points is called that ith cluster new value of ith cluster but here if we are not only dealing with mean we are also dealing with uh, covariances and there is another term which is which we are calling weight so we are dealing with three parameters it's not just one parameter one thing secondly most important is that uh, we are also dealing with soft clusters not the hard cluster in KME we are dealing uh, hard clusters here we are dealing with probabilities and soft clusters so we will find out not just the mean but the weighted mean if you know about the mean then you also know about the standard deviation and covariance as the formula is very much well known and you can find out on the internet so we also find out the weighted covariances given the data and we also find out the weighted weight. So this is like confusing word. So let's not use it weighted weight, but let's call it weighted prior. Let's not call it weighted weight. It's a weighted prior. So why we are calling it weighted prior? Because it's not hard cluster. If it were hard cluster and cluster one was having, cluster one was having three points, cluster two was having five points and cluster three were having uh, suppose seven points then it means total we do have 7 plus 5 12 and 15 points so cluster 1 the weight of cluster 1 will be 3 out of 15 cluster 2 will be having 5 out of 15 cluster 3 will be having 7 out of 15 so this will be the prior for each of the cluster however we are not dealing with the hard cluster so we can't say that cluster 1 is having three uh, sample points instead we are saying that cluster 1 will be having all of the 15 point uh, cluster 1 will be having membership for all of the 15 points this cluster 1 by cluster 1 i mean the first gaussian and then the second gaussian and then the third gaussian so we will find out the total weight and the weight uh, total weight for cluster 1 cluster 2 and cluster 3 and then we will find out the weight for only cluster 1 we divide that cluster 1 weights by the total weight and the same goes for cluster 2 and cluster 3. This is how we find out the uh, prior. So once we find out that, so we have just calculated the new uh, updated parameters. Uh, so this is what we call maximization step where we are updating the parameters. Perfect. This E and M step keeps on going and going unless and until uh, the log likelihood uh, of uh, data points occurring in these specific uh, in these in these Gaussians do not uh, move and do not improve so we will be also writing the log likelihood function and uh, you can write you can find out the formula for that uh, so once we write we, once we write that we'll keep track of log likelihood and uh, then we will uh, work with that we will just use that to find out the uh, improvements let's put it in Python okay so we start with importing different libraries then we apply the e step 
in the E step, we compute the responsibilities given the data, weights, means, and covariances. So this is like finding out the number of samples. This is no finding out number of clusters. This is like initializing uh, with zeros uh, the responsibility matrix. Then for each data point and for each cluster, we find out uh, this probability of data occurring in uh, in cluster K or in Gaussian K given its mean and covariance. This is the function multivariate normal that we are using and we have imported it from uh, SciPy. So you, you can look it up and then we multiply it with the weights. Uh, weights is basically a prior that we will be calculating. So these will be responsibilities. And once we find that we divide it by the row sum so that uh, they all sum to one. Okay, E step is very easy. Once we find out this E step, we 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 calculate, uh, we update the parameters given the current cluster responsibilities. This is an M step. So we have to update three things. One is weight. For weight, as I have already explained, we are dealing with soft responsibilities. So we sum all of the responsibilities or membership values to find out that that weight. I have already the explanation is already there in the notebook. You can find it out. Okay, once we do that. Uh, we compute the mean. Uh, this is like weighted mean. So this weighted mean is calculated for each of the Gaussian or each of the cluster. Once we do that, we update the covariance. Even the formula is given in the in this notebook. So uh, the, uh, for each of the cluster and for each of the data point, we calculate for each of the cluster we calculate the covariance uh, covariance matrix. We update this covariance matrix uh, given uh, the data and responsibilities. Once we do that, then we also write this log likelihood function uh, for uh, this log likelihood function is basically uh, calculated because we want to find out, uh, we want to track uh, the uh, the improvements if if it is converged or not, if the EM algorithm has been converged or not. So this, this is basically the main formula and you can find it out uh, why it is written like that. I mean, this is mathematical jargon and mathematical formula is available in a lot of, a lot of books and a lot of articles. This is just an implementation of that formula. So this is like combining all the pieces together where we initiate these means, covariances and weights. Uh, given that we infer the dimension of data set and number of clusters. Uh, so this is like total number of samples and this is total number of uh, dimension like features and total number of cluster. Once we have that, then we initialize uh, this responsibility matrix and we calculate the log likelihood of data given weights, means and covariances. And then for maxi um, for each in each iteration, uh, we print every fifth of iteration and then we compute the responsibility. This is an E step and an M step. We compute uh, we compute the weights and then we compute the update the uh, mean and update the covariances given the responsibilities. If we track the log likelihood. Uh, if log likelihood is not improving, we break. Otherwise, uh, we uh, we keep on moving. We keep on iterating. Uh, and uh, finally, we output the weights, means, covariances, log likelihood, and responsibilities in the form of dictionary. Then this is uh, this is this function is all what it needs to implement the whole EM algorithm. Now to test. We have generated some data. Uh, this is some that this is a function to generate some data that we will be using later. But before that, we are just trying to find out. Uh, this is like uh, uh, initializing this mean. We are working with three Gaussians and uh, just let me. Okay. Then we have also initialized the covariance matrix. These are prior weights that we have initialized. Then we generate data. And this is the data. This is how it looks. It seems like it is coming from three different Gaussian distributions. So we should uh, we we should find out those three Gaussians. Uh, once uh, we have applied the uh, EM algorithm on that data, then we uh, try uh, try to plot out the progress of parameters, how it is actually working. So these are the functions for bivariate normal that we are bivariate normal means we are working in uh, two dimension uh, because uh, we have uh, used the SciPy function for for calculating the probabilities for multivariate uh, Gaussian. So this is for bivariate Gaussian. Uh, we have just uh, written our own function. Then we plot contours. This is a function for plotting the contour. Initially, uh, this was the initial. Uh, this was uh, at the initial step. All of the three clusters when initialized. But after running it for 22 iterations, this is how the final clusters become became. So it means the E algorithm is working fine. Then we look at the log likelihood, and log likelihood was also increasing. So this is done. Now we are applying that for uh, to a real image data set and below this line is all application to the image data set and some relevant things to uh, images. So this is how it works. There is nothing uh, important to it. This is there is nothing technical uh, uh, left to explain it. Okay, so in this whole algorithm, there is an E step and then there is an M step. In M step, we are doing three things, counting, computing, updating weights, updating the mean and updating the covariance then tracking with the uh, with uh, log likelihood values